Ms. Kelly, and I think um, this will be an opportunity for us to join together and you get three votes <laughs> in the process instead of just one. And we have three very unique perspectives. I mean, Chris, is, he's been in the House of Representatives for longer than anybody else currently in, in the Missouri House. Uh, Mary's got tremendous executive experience in working for the AG office, working for the governor's office, working for the Department of Natural Resources. Um, and I bring a little bit of experience in working for Senator McCaskill in Washington. Um, and so a little bit more of a different outside perspective. So I think the three of us combined have a very uh, comprehensive view of uh, what's going on in Jeff City. Any other issues? I mean, university, anything else you guys want to tackle together? Uh, all of the yeah. above, yes, the university especially. We're all going to be advocates for MU. It's a great research university in our state, and we believe what's good for the University of Missouri is good for the state of Missouri. Jason mentioned the, uh, the tight budget uh, that we can kind of, <laughs> I guess, forecast to a certain extent. How much is the economic situation going to curtail what you would like to do in your first legislative session, or will it curtail it at all? Well, on issues like this, I don't know that it will. I mean, it wouldn't cost any more to have robo uh, bans on the no-call list. Uh, it wouldn't cost any more to uh, reinstate campaign uh, finance uh, contribution limits. So there's some things that uh, we need to look at to see if there is money, uh, and there may be money through the Secretary of State's office and even federal money to look at some of the early voting uh, activities. So. Um, We'll learn, we'll listen and learn and uh, see what we can do, but we're going to be fighting hard for this community and for the citizens of Missouri. Let me ask you this question. Medicaid is, you know, a real hot topic. That's kind of what Jay Nixon was hammering on the entire election. We're going to get Medicaid restored. Well, there just may not be money. So. What, what do you do if there's just not money for Medicaid this legislative session? I mean, can, can you try to restore it to, to a certain extent, or what do you do with that? Two, two things I'd say. One, there's a difference between policy problems and budget problems. There's certain, like, as Mary was saying, there's certain policy things that you can solve um, without costing any money. Protecting the academic freedom in the university, um, no call list, those are, those are easy, and I hope that we can get a lot of those things done. Budget things are going to be more difficult. Um, with, the, with the Medicaid, um, it's going to be a tremendous cost to the, the, the Missouri budget. There's no doubt about that. On the flip side, it brings in a tremendous amount of federal money. And when the economy in Missouri is hurting, and when communities are, you know, cities and rural areas are hurting, this is a really, really good time to make an investment, which will actually have matching funds from the federal government. We'll pump a billion dollars more of federal money into Missouri's economy. So from that sense, I think it's important even for our economic development that we go ahead and we go ahead and reinstate those cuts. Well, let me ask you this question, and this was a, this was a point that your invisible colleague made a couple, like a couple days ago. He told me that in the next budget there's going to have to be cuts in certain services and my question for you too is how do you make cuts in potential government spending while putting through a potential at the low end 250 260 million dollar increase in Medicaid spending it, it, how, how do you, how exactly do you go about doing both things I'm not sure I understand how do you okay how do you make cuts while increasing spending I mean it's as Chris yeah. said often during his campaign it's a matter of priorities and it's figuring out what those priorities are going to be um, so Whatever, whatever we spend money on, that's going to be our top top priorities. And so we may have to go and reprioritize. Um, but I, I don't think moving money from one place to another, and even in a tight budget year, is, is when you can you can still do it. And that that is what you do. I mean, uh, no budget is just firm. I mean, you look for opportunities to streamline government. Uh, you look at the federal government, and you know if uh, some of the proposals there, as far as uh, the S chip program being refunded, uh, some of the other. Uh, uh, support for states. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at the total package and we're going to have some changes. And as somebody, somebody pointed to me one time, every dollar you spend in government, whatever you're putting that dollar for, that should be the most important thing. And whenever you put a dollar to another program, you're saying that that program is more important than everything else in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever time we, we put money into a tax credit, we are saying effectively that that tax credit by itself is more important than getting health care to, to a child. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's essentially what you're saying. So we're going to have to go through and make those priority decisions of which, which, which uh, programs need, need the most help. Okay, well thank you thank all you. for uh, joining us.